in the name of Jesus. Welcome to New Hope for Today. I'm so glad to be able to come into your home to minister the Word of God to you. I know that the Word of God is going to bless you because the Word of God says that in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word is God. There's power in the Word to save, heal, deliver, but it also blesses our life. And I know that today you are going to be blessed by the Word of God. May God bless you.
go with me to the book of Psalms chapter 20 and we're going to read the first eight verses in that psalm brother put that up there praise his mighty name How many love the Lord? Hallelujah. Chapter 20 of Psalms. And it's, uh, we're only going to read the first eight verses of that psalm. But it's, it's, it's got a lot of power in it. I believe more than anything that no matter how it goes in the elections, no matter what's happening, okay, let me say this to you. The Lord wants you to learn how to stand strong with Him. You got to put your faith and your trust in the Lord. He is. He is everything. Él es todo para nosotros. Y tenemos que poner toda nuestra fe en Él. Ok. No matter what, what comes our way. Ok. No matter what happens. We got to stand strong Amen. in the Lord. I believe that God is moving. And He's moving mighty through our nation. And He's doing big and powerful things. And sometimes we don't see Him with our physical eye. Because we're so, so involved in looking at things in the natural. We see natural things going on. The natural problems. The natural situations. But let me tell you something. God has never abandoned you. And he's not going to do it now. Amen. Praise God. So we want to. We want to read this verse, these verses. It says, May the Lord, it says, May the Lord answer you in the day of trouble. Is that heavy? How many know he will? Say it with me, he will. May the name of the God of Jacob set you up on high and defend you. Okay, I'm reading the, the New Living Translation, or the, the, the Amplified, but the, 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 the uh, Li- New Living Translation says, they are brought down low, this verse 8, they are brought, brought down low and fallen. Those are the ones that come against the, 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 the people of God and the things of God. Amen. All right? But look what it says. He sends you help from the sanctuary and support refresh and strengthens you from Zion. Imagine, you know, a lot of people, a lot of people don't understand why church? And why so much church? Somebody told me one day, I'm not going to go to hell because I don't go to church. I said, no, you're not going to go to hell because you don't go to church. You're going to go to hell because you're weak. Do you understand the weaker you get, the more you succumb, you become to the enemy. 
That's a word, isn't it? Succumb? Yeah. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. I've heard it's a word. That's the first time I've used it. <laughs> All right? So, so can you imagine, can you imagine that, that people don't understand how the enemy works? Amen. The enemy works in, in ways to try and defeat the people of God. All right? So he, he deals, look at me over here, he deals in half-truths. Half-truths. He'll take the Word of God and twist it so that you can believe a lie. You've got to believe the whole truth, not a half-truth. Amen. Have you ever had somebody tell you something and they only told you half of it? They didn't tell you the whole story? Isn't that heavy? Because they wanted you to, listen to me, they wanted you to believe a certain way. They wanted you to think a certain way. All right? Isn't that, isn't that, isn't that a trip? Hey? They wanted you to succumb to their way of thinking. All right? So look at this. Verse 3. Remember all your offerings and accept your burnt sacrifices. He's talking about, remember, don't forget to, to offer those offerings that you, you give to God. Listen to me. It's not only money, even though money plays a big part in it, but it's also your worship. It's your prayer. It's your connection to God. It's, it's the word of God you let into your heart. And there is, all of it plays a big part in your survival. Listen to me. We are fighting the, one of the greatest and biggest battles, the churches in the history of the world. The biggest enemy that the progressive movement has is the church. They are against the church. See, if, if they could close down every church right now, they would do it. They would do it. But you and I have got to tell ourselves today, no, no, listen, we got to tell ourselves today, I'm going to get better at my Christian walk. I'm going to get real with this thing. Amen? Because if we don't, Listen, you can't blame nobody. You can't blame nobody, not even, not even the preacher, nobody. Because we're hearing the word. And, and the word is real, the word is true. All right? So look at this. Verse 4. May he grant you according to your heart's desire and fulfill all your plans. Now look, look over here at me. When you draw close to God, see the, the difference between a, an individual who's, who's ne hardly never in contact with God is that they become selfish. They stay selfish. How many know when we come to the Lord, we're selfish? The only thing we think about is ourselves. Me, myself, and I. Instead of God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. It's me, myself, and I. Okay, we, we, that's all that matters to me. Just me, just me, me. And we never get out of that. All right? So when he talks here, he says, when you draw close to the Lord, listen, when you draw close to him, when you're walking close to God, let me tell you something. You don't have to worry about your desires because your desires will be directed by the Holy Ghost. Is there anybody here? Your spiritual desire will be directed by the Holy Ghost. Amen? Are you with me? Are you with me? You guys didn't like that, huh? You wanted me to say, oh, he, he, he's just going to rock you. And he's gonna... No, brother, come on. Amen. Verse 5. We will shout in triumph. We will shout in triumph. Praise God. Can you give the Lord a big shout of triumph? Yeah. Praise God. 
we will shout in triumph at your salvation and victory. And in the name of our God, we will set up our banners. May the Lord fulfill all your petitions. How many know he, 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 he wants to move for us? He wants to help you. He wants to, 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 to do what you cannot do. He's a miracle-working God. He's a God that, that does the impossible. In fact, I'm going to tell you something. Now that we start this revival, praise God, we're going to see miracles. I, I, I want to see miracles. Thank you, Lord. All right? I want to see miracles. Amen. Okay, verse 6. Now I know, now I know that the Lord saves. How did he know that? How did he begin to recognize that God was with him? Because if you jump back up to the, to the first verse, you'll find that out right there. He said, may the Lord answer you in the day of trouble. When, when you were going through the, through the stuff, when you were going through the trials, the problems, the circumstances, the financial difficulties, everything you were facing, God was right there with you and he was helping you. Praise God. Give the Lord praise. He's right there. We will set up our banners. May the Lord fulfill all of our petitions. Now, you got to know the word of God because in 1 John, he says he won't answer petitions that are going to hurt you. you you got to be in line with God. Say it with me. i got to be in line with God. He does, li, listen, look over here at me. There, there's this perfect will and his progressive will. Okay? His perfect will is when you want to do what God wants. His progressive will is when you do what you want and God allowed you to do it even though it hurts you. And this is what he says. Oh, you want that man? You want that boyfriend? You want that girlfriend? You think she's all shapey and pretty? You don't know her inside like I know it? Oh, no, 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 no. You guys didn't hear me. Listen, listen to me. And he's saying, okay, I'll let you have him or I'll let you have her, but don't come back crying later. No vengas llorando después. Oh, you're not hearing me. This is why it's so important, church, to draw, draw close to God. Draw close to the Lord. Amen. Are you with me, church? I said amen. amen. Okay. Verse 7. Some trust in and boast of chariots and some of horses. That was the chariots and horses were the strength of the flesh. You understand me? When you read the Bible and you see how the enemies of God would come against the children of God with chariots and horses. That was their power. That was their strength. In, in the Bible, in the Old Testament, whoever had more horses and chariots and army and everything, they were more powerful. All right? But with God, that means nothing. Remember there was a time when Elijah... Elijah, man, his servant got up one day and walked outside because he had been snitching on them to the king of all their plans because God would give him that, uh, what they were thinking. So they came after, they came after, after Elijah, amen, and, the, and, his, and his servant. And his servant got up one day and he walks outside and he looks and all the mountains were full of chariots and horses. Our, an army so big, man, and and, and he went back inside and he wakes up Elijah and he tells him, Hey, look what you did. They're going to kill us out there. And he said, What do you mean? 
I'm paraphrasing it for you. I'm trying to make it more exciting for you. Amen. Amen. So, you, so, so, so Elijah walked outside and he looked up into the mountain and there was all these chariots and earthy. And he looked at the servant and he said, well, what are you talking about? He said, look at all these, this army. They're going to, they came to kill us. And he says, haven't you seen who is with us is greater than them? So he prayed, Lord, open his eyes that he may see. When his eyes were open, he saw chariots of fire surrounding those chariots, and they captured every one of them and brought them. Are you with me? And he brought them, amen, to the king. Now, now listen to me. Hear what I'm going to say to you. The power of God is the most powerful thing you possess in your life. But you know what? The devil is going to work hard, I mean hard, to try to weaken your experiences with the Holy Spirit. He doesn't want you to have the power of God flowing through you because when the, the power of God flows through you, you're going to impact others. Amen. Others are going to be impacted by your life. All right? He doesn't want that. Are, is there anybody home? Okay? So, so, so remember that he'll try to impact you. So when, when people say, well, I'm not going to hell because I don't go to church. No, no, you're not going to hell because of that. You're going to go to hell because you're going to get weaker and weaker and weaker. And by the time you know it, you're totally gone, man. You know how I know I, I'm a pastor. I'm a pastor. You soy pastor. Mira estos hombres sentados aquí delante. Look at them sitting right here. Qué, qué bueno, ¿verdad? qué bonito. Pero mire, you know how I know when something's going on and they're they're already heading towards the the, the back door. They, they they start they start sitting in a different seat every time till they land out in the back seat and then from the back seat they land out outside and then you never hear from them again oh you're not hearing me that's why I told that man there right there the other day you, you never come to pray at the altar you know why I told you that because Every time altar call comes and you go keep going outside to talk to the other guys, and that, that's, there's nothing spiritual in that. Amen. That's the enemy trying to keep you away from God. Amen. How, many, how many love the truth? Amen. I mean, I got to tell you the truth. I'm not going to tell you a lie. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. So, so imagine here tonight he, he, he'll try everything he can to keep you away. And, and, and he'll always give you a half truth. He'll never give you the whole truth, the full truth. He'll give you a half truth. Do you know that the majority of people out there right now, a big vast majority of Christians out there right now, are living in a half truth. Isn't that a trip? That's heavy duty. Amen? Don't you think it's heavy duty? I, I think it is, brother. I think it is. You'll never, you'll never draw close to God. Listen to me. Every one of us here, every one of us right here is going to establish a cycle in our lives on how we, we serve the Lord, how we seek the Lord. If we sit way back there or if we're going to sit way up here, you know, we, we establish a cycle for our own lives. It becomes a way of life for us. Anybody here? 
a lot of those people, there's going to be a lot of people that no longer will go to the altar. They just take off right at an altar call. They take off. They, they don't go to the altar anywhere. Listen to me. It's a cycle. It's a habit. How, how, listen to me. I mean, think about it logically, just logically. How would, how do you think God feels when you say you love him, but you don't want to meet with him? That's heavy. Say it with me in Spanish. Stop pesado. Huh? In English, it's heavy duty. <laughs> See, how, how, you know, this is important, church, because we're living in that hour right now where you and I have to reestablish our, 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 our relationship and our walk, and, and we, we've, got to, we've got to stand for the Lord, and, 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 and no matter what, and, and, and listen, we can't let nothing detour us. Because a lot of things will happen to try to detour us. Look at verse 8. They are bowed down. Bowed or bowed? Bowed? Is that bowed? Or bowed? Bowed or bowed? Bowed, they are bowed down? It looks like bowed to me. A bow and arrow, you know? They are bowed down and fallen. Look at this. He's not talking about the righteous. He's talking about those that, those that, that, that should have gotten strong, that should have got in there with the Lord, those that should have, you know. He said, they are bowed down. In other words, they're humble. Look at this. But we are risen and stand upright. We are strong. Give the Lord a big praise. Okay, now I want you to go with me to Ephesians. Chapter 6. Verse 13 to verse 17. Okay? What a, what a powerful God. Amen. Thank you, Lord. He says, therefore, put on God's complete armor. Amen. Toda la armadura del Señor. Put on God's complete armor. Don't leave anything out. Put it all on. Amen. See, now, 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 I told somebody the other day, every part of the armor of God is a part of, of who Jesus is. It's a part of his character. It's a part of who he is. You're putting God on. You're putting Jesus Christ on. Are you with me, church? You're putting his character on, who he is, who he was. Okay? The whole armor of God. I've heard people pray, I, today I put on the whole armor of God. Amen. And they walk out. I say, Wow. That was a quick armor God put on. It, the armor of God is something you live. You live by that. Say it with me. I live by it. I sleep in it. I wake up in it. I walk in it. That's my life. The whole armor of God. I protect myself. With the character of who Jesus Christ is. 
in my life. Are you with me, church? Give him a big praise. Therefore, put on God's complete armor that you may be able to resist and stand your ground. Remember that. That's heavy duty because the enemy is going to try to knock you off the block in every way he can. Look at this. There's that sister right there. She's been coming up for how long? Two weeks? Three weeks? And I'll bet you there's been enemies that have tried to come in and knock you off the block. But if you hang on, he thought, you hang on, you're going to see the blessing of the Lord. Amen. Look at this. Therefore, put on God's complete armor that you may be able to resist and stand your ground on the evil day. Oh, brother, what an evil day we're living in today. This is evil. We're living in a very evil, evil time right now. Are you here? How many believe we're living in an evil day right now? This is evil. I mean, brother, it's, 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 it's heavy duty out there, man. And, and listen, and when you have politicians ignoring that, that there's crime and that crime has risen, that murder has risen, and drug addiction has risen, fentanyl overdoses has risen, all those stuff. When you have politicians ignoring that and saying they don't see nothing going on in their city, let me tell you something. They're either stupid or they're blind. Because it's happening all over. Every city has it going in their own, in their own towns. Every town has it going. All right? It's, it's a pandemic that's happening right now in our country. It's a pandemic, church, that, that's going on. Okay? So look what he says here. Therefore, put on God's complete armor that you may be able to resist and stand your ground on the evil day of danger. And having done all that crisis demands to stand firmly in your place. Amen. In other words, don't let the devil move you for nothing. Amen. Don't, don't let him move you. Don't let him move you. Are you with me, church? You got to stay put. Say it with me. I got to stay put. I, I'm not going to move. I, I got I to gotta pretend I have a flat tire. I can't move the can't move my motor. Let's go on, verse 14. Stand therefore, hold your ground, having tightened the belt of truth around your loins, and having put on the breastplate of integrity and of moral rectitude and right standing with God. He's saying, I want you to put these things on, on your life so that you can have the power to, de to defeat the enemy. All right? How many know we got to be able to defeat the enemy? Amen. Let's go on to verse 15. And having shod your feet in preparation to face the enemy with the firm-footed stability, the promptness, and the readiness produced by the good news of the gospel of peace. What a powerful God. Yeah. Amen. I'm going to read it to you in a moment in the New Living Translation. But this is powerful. Look, look at verse 16. Lift up over all the covering the shield of saving faith. Faith. Upon which you can quench all the flaming missiles of the wicked one. Imagine, faith is so powerful. He says, if you, if, you, if you have faith in me, you can quench all the fiery darts of the enemy. Yeah. If you don't take your eyes off of me, yeah. if, you don't, if you don't start looking at everything else going on out there or everywhere else, you're, you're, listen to me, he said, you've got, to, you've got to use your faith to quench every attack of the enemy. Yeah. 
every fiery dart that the enemy would try to throw at you. I remember, I remember when I was a, a, a new Christian, a brand new Christian. I was, I was working at Safeway Warehouse. And I remember I, I would go in there and I would witness to everybody. I was witnessing to everybody. I was telling everybody about the Lord. Amen. Before I was selling dope there, I was doing drugs with them. I was, we are doing all kinds of crazy stuff in there. Gambling and you name it, we did it all. But, 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 but listen, when I got saved, I went in there with a Bible, man. And I started preaching to everybody about the Lord at the Safeway Warehouse. Now look at this. And one day, I felt something come over me. And I saw in the spirit realm, in my mind, fiery darts being thrown at me, thrusted at me. I mean fast by the thousands in my mind being thrown at me. Okay? These are the darts of the enemy. Those are not the darts of God. Hello? He'll try, to, he'll try to take your joy. He'll try to take your peace. He'll try to take everything away from you that, that God has given you. He'll try to make you believe that God is not with you. He'll try to make you believe, man, that you believe the farce. I mean, he'll, he'll do all kinds of stuff. But you got to stand your ground. you got to stand your ground, not be moved, and then lift up the shield of faith. Tell yourself, I'm not moving because God is with me. The Lord is with me. I remember one day, I was sitting in the church. I went early. It was on a Sunday night. I went early. And, and I sat in the back. I was looking at the musicians. They were tuning up their guitars and, and, and everything they were using. And they were playing a few songs to worship the Lord and, and all of that before church. And I'm sitting in the back when all of a sudden I hear a voice. Listen to me. This is real. I heard a voice and this voice told me this. He said, Ray, get up and leave this place right now. I wasn't saying a single word, not a word with my mouth. But I heard my spirit answer back and says, no. I just came from there. Amen. I'm not going out there. Amen. My spirit is talking back to this thing. And then this thing said, listen, if you will get up and leave right now, all of this I will give to you. And he showed me a vision. I'm not lying to you. He said, I'll give you all this. He showed me a vision. And in this vision, I'm sitting there looking, was everything a man could ever desire or want in life. Mansions, cars, money, women, drugs. I mean, you name it, everything that a man could ever want. He says, I'll give it all to you if you get up and leave right now. And I says, I'm not going. My spirit spoke back to this thing, and I grabbed the bench where I was sitting, and I grabbed it down here, and, 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 and my spirit spoke back to this, to this voice. I know, I know now today it was the enemy. He, uh, my spirit spoke back and said, I'm not leaving, I, I said. I'm going to serve the Lord. Yeah. Are you with me? So that night I stayed in church. I, I don't even remember what was preached or anything, but I do remember when the altar call was made. I went to that altar, and I cried out to the Lord for help. And that night the Lord helped me. He set me free from all those fiery darts and those attacks of the enemy that were coming against me. Are you with me, church? Now today I know, I know today the Lord saved me way back then for this hour. This hour. Anybody home? So, so look at this. Lift up over the covering shield the saving faith upon which you can quench 
all the flaming missiles of the wicked one. I, imagine, he says, a, it says a covering, your Bible might say, the helmet of salvation. The helmet of salvation. You know what the helmet of salvation is supposed to do? Protect your mind. You got to fill your mind. Listen to me. You got to fill your mind with, a, with the gospel of Jesus Christ. You got to fill your mind with the word of God. Llena tu mente con la palabra viva del Señor. Fill it. Fill your mind. Don't, don't, don't go a day or a night without reading or praying or talking to God or something. You, you got you got to fill, you got to fill your mind with God. And he'll put a covering over you. The Bible calls it the helmet of salvation. He'll protect you. He'll keep you. Are you with me, church, tonight? He'll protect you and keep you. You got to understand tonight that the enemies, you are the enemy's greatest danger. You are the enemy's greatest enemy. And, and, and hear me. He knows that if he, if, if he fails to turn you away from God, that many others are going to come to God through you. Are you with me tonight? We, we, we have to stand. It's not a, a, a thing of whether I... I don't know if I can, or I don't know, you know. I tell him, no, no, no. I, had a, I invited, I invited a, a young man yesterday to church. He said, well, I'll try. I said, brother, throw try out the door. There's no more trying. You either do it or you don't. You either go to heaven or you go to hell. I said, one or the other. That's all there is, church. There's nothing more. Are you with me, church? All this half-stepping stuff, and, and, and we think it's... A, no, 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 no. We got to make it. Say it with me. We got to make it. Praise his mighty name. So let's, let's go on. This is the, the 17th verse. Look what it says. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, the Word of God, which wills it, which uh, spirit wills, which is the word of God. Amen. Know your Bible. Get to know your Bible. Read it every day. Read it every day. Read it. Read it. Don't just read a little verse. Get in there. Read chapters. Read it. Read it. Read it. Amen. You might say this. Listen to me. You might say, well, I don't understand it. And, and it's hard for me to It don't matter. Read it anyway. Amen. Because the day that you need it, the Holy Spirit has something to bring to you. He's got something, come on, to help you fight the enemy with. Come on, give him a big praise. Now, standing strong isn't so much, uh, you know, that you got strength and muscles and and I, I got a lot of, you know, know-how. No. It, it, it has to do with the Holy Spirit. Amen. With, with your relationship with the Holy Spirit. Amen. You got to have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. Yeah. It's the Holy Spirit that will give you the strength. Yeah. That's not your strength. Your strength has nothing to do with it. You look at this. The strongest one of you in this whole place is a weakling before the devil. You got to have the Holy Ghost giving you the strength to conquer, to walk with God, to, to, I mean, to just defeat the devil in every area of life. Come on, are you with me, church? He will help you. The Lord will help you. This is why he's here He's here to help you. The Bible calls him a counselor. A counselor. If you, if you, if you read that, what a counselor means, he stands with you. He's, he'll never leave you. He'll, he'll, he's there to, to help you with every need. He's there, I mean, he's everything to you. 
the, the Holy Ghost is. And, and, and he's there for you. This is the, I thank the Lord for the Holy Spirit every day. What would, we, what would happen without him? Huh? What would happen without him? I mean, brother, we need God. We need the Lord, especially in this, in this late hour. Amen. And uh, I want you to go with me. Praise God to the book of 2 Corinthians 12 10. Look at Paul, what he says here. So, for the sake of Christ, I am well pleased and take pleasure in infirmities. In other words, infirmities were, were the attacks of the enemy. Okay? And he says, insults, hardships, persecutions, perplexities, and distresses. For when I am weak, look at this, for when I am weak in human strength, huh? then I am truly strong, enable and powerful in divine strength. In the strength of God, I am strong. Listen, you, 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 try, to, you try to fight the enemy in, in your own strength, your own human strength, you're not going to make it. Eventually, you're going to give up. You're going to quit. Are you with me? So what do you got to do? You got to surrender to the Holy Spirit, to the ways of God. You got to surrender to the Holy Spirit and let the Holy Spirit give you the strength that only he can give you. No one else can give it to you. Come on, give him praise. He's, he's a mighty God. Stand strong in God. Stand strong in his spirit, okay? Go, go, go with me. Are you with me, church? Praise the Lord. I'm, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to get you to see something because... See, we don't know what tomorrow's bringing. We, we don't know what's going to happen. Okay? I was hearing today the president give his speech. And one of the things he said is, I'm going to work with the Republicans because they already took over Congress. He said, I'm going to work with the Republicans, but I'm not going to change what I'm doing. So there's going to be a battle. Anybody home? Listen, hear me, hear me today. You and I are fighting spiritual battles. These are spiritual battles. They're not natural battles. These are spiritual battles. We got to understand something. We have Jesus to help us fight this battle. We got to fight this battle with the Lord. Hallelujah. Are, are you with me, church? Okay, I want you to go with me to the book of Acts, chapter 14, verse 22. Chapter 14, verse 22. Okay. What does it say? Verse 22. 14, 22. Oh, man. See, I have to be strong. All right. Establishing and strengthening the souls and the hearts of the disciples. Amen. Urging and warning and encouraging them to stand firm. Stand firm. Amen. In the faith. Now look over here. In those days, the Pharisees, the scribes, the Sudeces, the Romans, all these people had come against the church. 
they had never, listen to me, they had never seen a church like the Christian church that had come out of the book of Acts. Never. They had never seen people that spoke in tongues like the, like the, like the children of God that were speaking in tongues after the, 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 the baptism of the Holy Ghost came in in the upper room. They had never seen anything like that. So now here they are looking at, they're thinking that this is an occult. They didn't realize they were the occult. They had all the demon possessed, the, the, the people that needed healing. Uh, they, they had all these people in, in, their, in their churches and none of them ever got healed or delivered. The demons lived in them. They never got set free. And, and, and until Jesus came and set them free. Are you with me? Yeah. When he came, he began to deliver them. He began to set them free. Amen. Praise God. Amen. But they began to go against him because now everybody that had a need, everybody that needed to be healed and set free needed a miracle. They were coming to Jesus. Well, listen to me. They say that history repeats itself. We're going to, it's going to repeat itself. The Pentecostal church, the, the church that flows with the power of God, the Holy Ghost, listen to me, is going to be facing a lot of a lot of attacks. We're going to be facing a lot of attacks. Anybody home? Amen. But let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. But the Holy Spirit is in charge. He's going to take full control. He's going to bring healing. He's going to bring deliverance. You're going to see people delivered and saved and set free like you have never seen in your entire life. Yeah, you better give him praise. Okay? And he uses people. He uses people. Okay? After, after the day of Pentecost, the 120, they, 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 they begin to spread out from there. They, 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 had a, they opened a church in, in Jerusalem, and everybody was getting saved, and they were coming, and and, and, and then they, they started attacking them, and they started spreading them out all over. Amen. Uh, the other night I was looking at a, a, a commentary they were talking about where the Apostle Paul got to go all the way to Europe to preach the gospel. Can you imagine? He preached the gospel all the way to Europe. Amen. And I was looking at that, and I said, wow, that's heavy duty. One man on foot. Can you imagine a church full of people with cars? This is heavy. Because the Lord wants, listen to me, He wants to empower the church. But He has to have a strong church. A strong people. Listen, look, look over here at me. If you're the kind of person tonight that, well, I don't know, are you going to church? I don't know. I don't feel like I want to go tonight. Maybe next time. Or maybe next week. No, listen, listen, listen to me. You got to stop all that, all that nonsense. You're going to stop it. Or you're going to get caught in your snare. Christianity is not about you. It's all, it's all about Jesus. Are, are you with me, church? So, so, you know, you hear so many people, well, I don't know, maybe I'll, I'll see, I'll try, or I don't know if I will. I, I, I'll, I, yeah, I'll see there if I get there. You know, no, all that nonsense has got to stop. It's got to stop. It's your Christian life. Listen to me, this is about heaven or hell. This is about taking our families to heaven with us. This thing is real. Are you with me, church? This is real. And we got to get it done. We got to do this. Don't let, don't let the enemy, don't let the enemy play games with you. Don't play games with the enemy because the enemy will take you further and further and further. By the time you know it, you're out there and you, you don't even know how in the heck you got out there. Okay. 
Okay, so look at this. All right, go with me to Psalms 92, from verse 12 to 14. Praise his mighty name. Hallelujah. I said, praise his mighty name. Look, look, look over here. Look over here. Whenever you start thinking you're, you're so strong in the Lord, that's probably when you're the weakest. Thank you for allowing us to come into your home today. I know that the word of God blessed you richly. But I want to ask you a question today. Do you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? If you don't, I want to lead you to him. It's the greatest experience you'll ever have in your whole life. I just want you to pray this prayer with me. If you don't know him today, would you say, Lord Jesus, I confess I am a sinner and I have sinned against you. Would you please forgive me and come into my heart and wash my heart with your blood? I receive you as my Lord and my Savior. Amen. If you have prayed that prayer, would you call us on the phone number on the screen? We want to keep in touch with you. We want to help you continue with your walk with God. Or if you need any help of some sort, would you call us? If we can help you, we want to be there for you. May God bless you till the next time. Amen.